Hello everyone, this is Venom, and we are actually checking out today's This Week in Destiny. Now, typically I don't check out the This Week in Destinies. I, I'm not the kind of YouTuber that goes over every single update for things. Uh, even now that I'm back making videos about it too, it's not something I necessarily want to do. But because of all the big changes coming up for Into the Light, and all the huge changes coming for Final Shape, I decided to go ahead and cover today's, and any others that have uh, any real, real game-changing stuff I'll go over. Now, this week we've got a couple things I'd like to go over. There's a lot of stuff revolving PvP today. They go over some of the Pantheon stuff. Uh, they do go over the new exotic, uh, exotic loot system, as well as the shader revamp. So we're going to go over some of that stuff. I'm not going to get too far into the details, but I am going to hit some of the biggest things. Um, now, the first big thing is going to be that we are actually getting the three new maps here. Now, that, of course, is going to be on May 7th. We're getting three new maps. We got the Sears Plaza, Eventide Labs, and Dissonance. Uh, here are the maps here. They are on Bungie.net. You can see here's the Eventide, uh, Eventide Labs. Of course, um, you can see is, is a control map. You can see A, B, and C. You can, you can get a look at where everything is at already, so you can kind of be prepared for that when the maps get released. Uh, that's even Tide Labs. This is the map that actually looked pretty fun to me. It is the Sirius Plaza. This is the one that kind of reminded me of that old Halo map from uh, ODST, I think. Uh, might have been from Halo 3. I'm pretty sure it's ODST. It's whatever one you had. It's one of the ones you had a jetpack in. I remember that much. Uh, then Dissonance, of course, this is the one that takes place on the uh, the pyramid that the Traveler hit. So those are the map layouts. Again, these are on Bungie.net. You can take a look at those. Now, it says... Uh, they're going to actually be in a, their own playlist called New Territory. It says, when these maps arrive on May 7th, they'll be on a separate 3v3 playlist called New Territory, so you can enjoy the new experience these maps offer on demand. The playlist will replace the 3v3 quick play node and feature the three new maps with the following game modes. Survival, Elimination, Clash, and Collision. Be sure to pick up the introductory quest from Shaxx for more details on the maps and playlists. Additionally, while New Territory is a designated playlist for the new maps, the maps will be available in other playlists and the private lobby as usual. So you're going to have, if you just want to play just the new maps, there's going to have its own node that is only going to have those three maps. On top of that, the maps will still be in rotation with the regular playlist as well. So you're going to have the maps in the regular playlist, but if you only want to play the new ones, which I suspect people are going to be doing for a while, you're going to want that New Territory playlist. Uh, lastly, new territory will be available until the end of the season, at which point any player who engaged in the playlist will be awarded with the new Slaycation emblem. So hop in there, grab this emblem. I'm going to do so as well on the 7th, even though I don't PvP a lot. I'm going to go ahead and grab the emblem just because I am a collector. Now, we got the Pantheon. This is the Pantheon Deep Dive. This week, of course, the Pantheon released, so we got the first four bosses. They were, of course, Gogoroth, Caretaker, we had Atrax 1, and we have Zoark, Explicator of the Planets. Now, I have not got to do Pantheon myself yet. It's going to be coming out. Uh, I'll be doing that tomorrow at my clan. But it came out this week. I forgot which ones they were, uh, but a couple of checkpoints basically got disabled. They weren't working right. But uh, go ahead and hop into Pantheon again. That is the new boss rush game mode. Check that out. These are the first four bosses. I'm going to be hopping in those on Friday myself to see how they are going. Now, once you've done the Pantheon, you can actually get some, you know, real-life rewards if you want. You get the chance to, you know, buy a ring, and emblem. I'm not typically too into that stuff, but if you guys want to do that, go ahead and check it out. Now, here's what I really want to talk about. This is going to be the Rules Frequent Decryptor Program. It's going to be a new way to get exotic uh, exotic armor pieces here, and it's going to be really important for Final Shape. Now, it says, the experience of grinding out new exotic armor can be a time-consuming process. It can take quite a few runs to get the drop you're looking for, and many more to get that one that has stats to support your build. I literally spent all day one time, like literally 12 hours, trying to get the roll of starter skills I wanted. Never happened. Never happened. Matter of fact, that's when I found out that the stat mods for the for the ghost shells did not work on <laughs> exotic armor pieces that you get out of the Lost Edgers. I was very pissed off that day. It was a bad day. Uh, besides that, with exotic armor pieces often forming the backbone of every powerful build, new players are regularly asked to spend a long time tackling challenging content solo before being able to run builds that support the most effective tactics. Luckily, the uh, luckily, the Econ team has established a good working relationship with the tower's number one cryptarch over the last year as we added exotic armor focusing and we managed to help Raul set up a new promotional program of sorts that makes the farming the, that makes farming the army you want more deterministic and less dependent on rotators. It says, starting in the founder shape, Raul is going to be the source of any new exotic armor that we release. Again, Raul will be the source of exotic armors being released. It's no longer going to be, uh, you're no longer going to be grinding out lost edges for it. That's the part I'm not necessarily happy about. I'd still rather go and do that myself, but we'll see how this, uh, how this program works. Now it says when you first talk to Raul after the Final Shape launch, he will introduce you to new reward, to a new rewards program tied to his brand new reputation track. The idea is simple. The more you decode engrams with them, the more you increase your reputation with them. 
Once you completely fill the reputation track once and reset your rank, Raul will allow you into an elite club, giving you access to a new tier of focusing. So basically, he is going to be have actual vendor rakes now. So hopefully we actually get some Ingrams. I assume we're going to get Ingrams with that as well. As we're decoding Ingrams, we're going to get more Ingrams. So that's basically what it is. We're, gonna, we're basically giving him his own, his own rank. Now, it says once you become one of Raul's Ingram Insiders, and they spell that E-N-S-I-D-E-R-S, he was very proud of the name, so be nice to him. You'll be able to purchase any piece of exotic armor for any character on your account for one exotic Ingram and one exotic Cypher, in addition to their previous focusing options. Because this is tied to Raul's new reputation track, there is no weekly limit to using this tier of focusing. As long as you still have exotic Cyphers and Ingrams, you can keep rolling armor. Yeah, so that even though there's not technically a limit to how many armor pieces you can focus, because you only have so many exotic Cyphers, it's still going to have a limit to it. So, yeah, technically, the heat doesn't have a limit, but it's a catch-22 because the items you need to roll them have a limit. So, um, and it's a small limit. Uh, with this change, we're also altering the way old sources of exotic armor work. First, lost sectors will keep the same drop rates for exotics, but will instead drop Ingrams whenever they would have previously dropped gear. Neo Muna will also still drop, or yeah, we're also still drop exotic armor when you complete a Vex Strike Force scanner, but we won't be adding any new armor to the drop list after Season of the Wish. So you can still get exotics from lost sectors, but you're just going to get the Ingram, which will make things a bit easier. And Neo Muna, they're not going to add new armor to it, so that's. They basically got a couple seasons where that was relevant, and now we got one more system that just is going to be useless for the game. So, that's fun. Uh, with these changes, we know you're wondering, how long will it take to get this newfangled tier of focusing? Yeah, no shit. I've got the world's first race to prepare for. Whoop, whoop, without going into exact numbers, that the actions that will give the most rotation will be Precision Decryption, the tier 2 stuff, followed by Advanced Decryption, then opening an Exotic Ingram. And last but not least, opening a Prime Ingram. Uh, Prime Ingram. So if you want to be ready for the Witnesses forces as soon as possible, make sure to stock up on exotic Ingrams and a Senate Charter for June Force. As with a little more than a full stock of exotic Ingrams, we'll, you'll be able to start focusing armor. So basically, if you want to get to the point where you can actually start using this new system, you when they say a full stock of exotic Ingrams, I don't know if they mean your character or your entire account. That's about 30 Ingrams, and it said more than a full stock. So you're going to need to basically focus over 30 exotic Ingrams to get this new system so i'm not really sure how it's going to work out i'm not sure how much i like that because it's still not necessarily going to help newer players get to those armor pieces because they've still got to go through and grind lost sectors and that's still going to be very difficult for them for the rest of us it's just going to be annoying if you don't have a bunch of exotic uh Ingrams lying around right now that means either a you better start farming for some for when final shape comes out or b you're going to be stuck farming for a while before we can even get the new armor pieces so that's not going to be great and I assume it's also going to include the new class items we're going to get, because it's probably going to be the best way we can get our new class items, and we're going to need a lot of rolls for them. So, them them hamstringing players behind Raw Rules rank reset, I don't know how that's going to work out. Uh, especially since it looks like to reset the rank, we got to pick up an exotic cipher from them, and I don't know about you, I've got my cipher is full right now, so I'm going to have to use one or delete one to get this one. That's, uh, that's a waste of a cipher, so... Uh, hopefully they increase the amount of cybers we can hold. I doubt they will, but uh, it is what it is on that one. And then finally, the thing I want to talk about even more than uh, Raul is the Shader Icon revamp. And this is a big revamp they're talking about. For anyone who's played Destiny for more than an hour, you know that the exotic, or not the exotic, but all these shaders that we see do not necessarily match up with the colors that are going on our armor. In fact, uh, oftentimes what you think you're going to get, it ends up being something close to the opposite. Uh, it says Shader Icon Revamp. With the final shape, we're upgrading the look and design of the Shader Icon layout. Shaders are a core way a player can provide a unique look and feel to their Guardian, and we wanted to help continue to make a better experience. Our goal with this update is to help make the Shader Icons more accurately reflect colors and textures they will apply. Currently, there are some issues that can make the experience of applying a shader inconsistent. The first being that while each shader applies six colors, only four can only show on, on the Shader Icon. This can sometimes result in a shader appearing differently than players may expect from the icon preview. Yeah, I didn't know that there were six colors for the shaders. Uh, that's kind of crazy because, yeah, there's been no consistency whatsoever as far as what these uh, shaders are applying. In fact, it looks like half the time the main colors are hidden or not the ones that are shown here, so that's kind of crazy. Adding to this is the fact that all four color sections of the current shader icon are equal in shape and size, making it difficult to distinguish what the main colors will be when applied. Again, no shit. 
There are also many shaders that have unique lows that players strive for, and with the current design, they are now represented. Uh, Gannet Jade Stone is a great example of this. And here is a picture of the Gambit Jade Stone. It's a very popular green shader. It says, to help address these issues, we've made updates to the shader icon and include all six colors for that shader. We're also changing the design in a way that makes the primary colors appear to take more space than the secondary colors for a more accurate representation with most gear items. This is most. We'll see how that works. Uh, glows are also reflected in the updated design, so it'll be easier to distinguish those shaders within your shader selection screens. Now, it looks like this is Gambit Jade Stone for Final Shape. You can already see a lot of differences here. First off, the first difference is... The original shader is showing a huge pool of white here. I don't see any at all in here. So I think this is more than just a matter of the six colors not being represented accurately. I think these shaders just weren't showing the right colors, period. So, I mean, I'm looking at the two shaders right here. Like, supposedly this is supposed to be more accurate as to what the colors are going to be. Like, it looks like these are the main colors on the outside. It looks like this might be the trim. This might be, like, the secondary color. And it looks like this glowing strips on the ends are, like, the actual glow. But again, comparing that to the original Gambit, uh, Gambit Jade Stone, where is the white that's listed on here down here? In fact, this texture is not listed either. Like this, like what I'm seeing here, this one-to-one -one comparison still doesn't make any sense, which makes me think that it's not just a matter of the colors aren't represented correctly. I think they were just listing the wrong colors, period, and they were just too lazy to fix it up until now. So that's just what I'm observing with my own eyes. Again, maybe I'm wrong, but again, I'm seeing a big-ass white splotch here. Yes, they said it may not be representative as to how much is on there, but... This one should be, it's the same shader, and there's no white anywhere on here. So, I don't know what to think about this one. I still think that the shaders themselves that we got right now just aren't showing the right colors half the time. I think they're just labeled wrong and no one's gone back to fix them. I, again, that might be me, but we're going to go ahead and go on. We tested many different design solutions for this goal, and eventually settled on adding a diamond to the center of the current icon design and changing the layout of the color slots on the icon. We're hoping these new improvements will offer a better experience for Guardians looking to show off their best looks. All right. So, again, that's your shader one. I really want to talk about this because I noticed that one earlier that these they just don't match still. So, it doesn't make any sense to me unless all this time, which is what I've suspected, that they just listed the wrong colors on all these shaders. Which, again, it seems to be the case because they're showing us what both of the same shader look like both right now and in Final Shape. So... Uh, finally, there is a bunch of stuff from the PvP Strike Team. Personally, I'm not going to go over it, but there is a lot of stuff to go over some of the respawn. Uh, they go over something called a meter system, some balance issues. They talk about some um, special ammo issues. There's a lot for PvP going in here. I don't typically go over that too much. I'm not going to talk about it right here. But if you're interested in the PvP updates, go ahead and check it out. Um, finally, Super Black also came out this week. For those who don't know, Super Black finally is able to be obtained. If you get uh, To get it, you've got to max out. Shax's reputation for the uh, for onslaught, and you've got to get all the six weapons that were not unlocked unlocked as well. Once you do that, you can get keys from both uh, both our site and Shax. Each uh, each one has one key, and when you got both keys. You can obtain Super Black from the the onslaught base here next to Shax. So go ahead and pick it up. Um, past that, I'm not seeing anything else here too crazy to go over. Uh, what is this here? Movie of the week. We got movie of the week bigger stuff. Okay, so not really important for you guys. So, uh, that's pretty much it. Like I said, if you're interested in PvP, go ahead and check out the stuff from the PvP Strike Team. It's down here at the bottom. Uh, for this week in Destiny, I will probably go ahead and cover them from now on, at least up to final shape. Uh, I may just start covering them from now on. Period. Like I said, there have been a lot of updates. I probably should be more aware of, especially when I'm going to be talking about news and any changes. So, I probably should be going over those a bit more often. So. That's going to do it for today, guys. Thank you all for coming by, and I will see you all on the next video.